and Roll20 has a crash course here, and there's a bunch of YouTube videos also online. Um, I have the rights to show, or like, I have permissions to show the Roll20 stuff. I don't have permissions to show the other tutorials, so I'm going to start with Roll20 and see how far we can get with designing like a, a setting, because uh, I really don't know how to use Roll20 uh, that well. Like, I know macros exist, I know them vaguely, uh, I know you can assign tokens, I know you can assign, you can edit the the display fields, like what we're going to be doing right now, but um, there's still a lot that I don't know, and feel like I should. So, tonight I'm just going to be kind of uh, going through a little bit of self-edification. Change this up in the page settings. So, yeah. There's a lot that you can manage from page the page settings, settings cool. window. Roll20 tries to cover a lot of different system this, options here. This I didn't know. This For is instance, cool. you can turn off the grid entirely, or switch it over to a horizontal or vertical hex grid. For now, I'm going to switch this over to Pathfinder 3.5 under diagonals, and leave pretty much everything as is. I might need to change the page size later, but I'll play that by ear as I build my tavern. The tabletop has several layers to work from. Most activity happens on the objects and tokens cool. layer, it's also the only layer that your players have access to. I'm actually going to switch over to the maps and background layer to design my tavern. This layer is a safe place to keep images that you want to stay put. You can Probably drop do. images from your desktop to the tabletop, or pull them via Roll20's image search. I have a particular image in mind from the Roll20 marketplace that I want to use for the tavern, so I'm going to pull it up via search. Try to get this set up I already away. know the grid size of so this image, so instead of trying to scale this manually, I'm going to use the Set Dimensions tool under the Advanced Image Options to snap it to proper scale. Alright, so hold on, I missed that. Okay, missed that or that your players have access to. On. So... Wow, there's a lot of things here. Fog of War? Dynamic lighting. Archive page. Oh. Okay. Reveal areas. Oh, okay. Hide areas. Hides it. Okay. Learning... I'm actually going to switch there. over to the maps and background. Yeah, that would probably do. That's probably better this now. This layer is a safe place to keep images that you want to stay put. You can drop images from your desktop to the tabletop, or pull them via Roll20's image search. I have a particular image in mind from the Roll20 marketplace that I want to use for the tavern, so I'm going to pull it up via search. I already know the grid size of this image. So instead of trying to scale this manually, I'm going to, to use the for Set Dimensions forest. tool oh, under the here? Advanced Image Options Maps. to snap it to proper scale. Forest. Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to tweak the page size a bit so I don't have any more overhang past the tavern map. Now I want Within to... the page settings, you can adjust the page's height and width to whatever size you need for your campaign. There we go. This already have a grid now on we'll it. Now we'll need another page for the sewer dungeon crawl. I could create new pages by clicking on the Create New Page yes, it button, does. but then I end up with the default blank page again that's not that. using Pathfinder settings. Instead, I'm going to click on this button here to duplicate the current page. While this doesn't duplicate the content on the page, it does copy the page's settings, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to set up this page these, in exactly awesome the same fashion already. I did the first. Uh, I'm not experienced at all, really. I mean, I know how to drag and drop maps and stuff, but I theoretically know how to. I haven't actually done it. So let's look for dungeon. I just want to be able to snap something to grid. I want to load up something, and I want to drop it into roll 20, and I want it to align with the actual grid as it's presented, just like anybody else would. Um, let's see. So obviously this needs to get set over to a different layer. Settings. Okay, it's... When you import a map, it imports it as a token. We make it as a map layer. 
see there's a grid that goes over oh man so does this mean so here's a good experiment um this map comes with a grid on it and that grid does not oh does it align no it doesn't it does not align with the grid on this picture so if we disable the grid what happens if we do a ruler ten feet see it doesn't think it's right so the map was from the store and that's what I thought I had oh unless it's a premium asset that might be the issue map and background just want a tavern without anything on it here we go There's, if you go to the map layer and right click on a map picture, there's a line to grid option. There it is, under advanced. Grid alignment tool. This tool allows you to quickly size your map background to match the role. Click and drag to create a box the size of 3x3 three three grid pixels. Uh, try again. Three. Damn it, I can't see where the third one is. That doesn't look right. Let's grab it down here. Line to grid. Okay, cool. And then move that to the map layer. So then we looked at a ruler. Boom, bingo. Okay. Yes, the token, uh, the token and layers are different, yes. So I move this to the map layer and I'm back on the token layer. All right, so. I have access to. I'm actually going to switch over to the maps and background layer to design my tavern. This layer is a safe place to keep images that you want to stay put. You can drop images from your desktop to the tabletop, or pull them via Roll20's image search. I have a particular this? image in mind from the Roll20 marketplace that I want to use for the tavern, so I'm going to pull it up via search. I already know the grid size of this image, so instead of trying to scale this manually, I'm going to use the Set Dimensions tool under the Advanced Image Options to snap it to proper scale. Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to tweak the page size of it so I don't have any- Let's see, let me reload this. There we go. Tabletop has several layers to work from. Most activity happens on the objects and tokens layer. It's also the only layer Yeah, so when you drag things, they come in on whatever to. layer you're I'm actually on. Going okay. To switch over to the I actually didn't know that. I thought everything always tavern. just went to the token this layer. This layer is a safe place to keep images that you want to stay put. You can drop images from your desktop to the tabletop, or yeah. pull them from so the Yeah, so have I. I've moved things to different search. layers before. I have a particular image in mind from the World of Marketplace that I want to use for the tavern, so I'm going to pull it up via search. I already know the grid size of this Advanced image, set dimensions. so instead of trying to scale this manually, I'm going to use the Set Dimensions tool under the Advanced Image Options to snap it to proper scale. 
Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to tweak the page size a bit so I don't have any more overhang past the tavern map. Within the page settings, you can adjust the page's height and width to whatever size you need for your campaign. There we go. Okay. Now we'll need another page for the sewer dungeon crawl. I could create new pages by clicking on the Create New Page button, but then I end up with the default blank page again that's not using Pathfinder settings. Instead, I'm going to click on this button here to duplicate the current page. While this doesn't duplicate the content on the page, it does copy the page's oh, settings, which is exactly what I want. That's good to know. I'm going to set up this page in exactly the same fashion I did the first. I'm going to run a search for the image I want to use and drag it out to the tabletop. Since I know the dimensions of this image as well, I'm going to force its scale via the Set Dimensions option once again. Unlike the previous page, however, I'm going to use more than one image here. The sewer takes two map backdrops instead of one. Since the play space is rather narrow, I'm going to need to return to my page settings again. I'm going to alter the page's dimensions slightly to get it to neatly wrap around my images. I'm also going to add a bunch of prop images on here too, such as barrels, tables, and torches. If you plan to do some extensive interior dungeon design, remember that the Alt key is your friend when moving, rotating, and resizing images on a gridded tabletop. This will prevent images from grid snapping. That goes for any layer you're working on. And there we go. Okay, As a so GM, Alt does I can that. load any page I want just by clicking on it from the page toolbar. The oh, players, on the other hand, will only view whatever page their bookmark is resting on. If you need to, you can split the party between pages, but I don't think that'll be an issue in this session. And there we have it! Our battle maps are done. Now we're ready to move on to character sheets. The journal tab on the sidebar ah, handles so two types that. of record keeping. But then there's the also still, there's still snap to grid unless you use alt. These are essentially a list of PCs and ah, okay. NPCs. That's good to know. As you can see, I got my four PC entries ready and waiting for their players to eventually join my campaign. I also have NPC entries for notable characters at the. You can split the party between pages now. I don't know. PCs will run into, as well as one for the generic bandit enemy. I feel like this is going By over default, things that are too quick. I don't have any characters. Character sheet loaded in. So when I open a character journal, I only initially have access to the bio and info tab and the attributes and abilities tab. If you're working from a physical paper character sheet or using an outside like app I've like this Google before. Drive, Mythweaver, or tags, Hero but... Lab, then these two tabs could satisfy all you'll ever need. For convenience sake, you can also drop links to your outside app sheets or even paste the stat blocks directly into the bio tab text box. The bio tab is also where one stores their character's portrait image and eventually where we'll be storing the character tokens. There's also a field for GMs to where add the their character? own content or notes that will be kept hidden from the eyes of the players. Upon creation, only the GM will be able to view the journal entries. In order for players to see or edit a journal, we'll need to add them to the permissions. Since okay. none of my players have joined the campaign yet, I'm going to set the PC journals to be visible. Oh, there's my character. So now they showed up. And add edit permissions later on after everyone has joined the campaign. Yeah, I don't remember them being able to swap, uh, switch around and stuff. Okay, so I have a character here. Uh, I'm going to add a picture to it. Oh, I don't have any pictures. Um, let's search on here for some portraits. Girl. Got it. Do I have to save this image? Oh, so it has to be stored locally? Can I drop this file in here? No, okay, I have to do it that way. I can't draw it. I can't bring it from the map. Okay. You select a token. Testa. GM notes. Okay. 
Um, if I would have made this game uh, using D and D, would I actually have this stuff? Probably. Let me learn how to do that, which probably means I need to log out of this. Let me exit the game. Go to the settings, game settings. Ooh, magic. Fancy. I would like to do 5th edition SRD. And the character sheet template. Let's try to find Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons, 5th edition. OGL by Roll20, community contributed. Shaped V2. Uh, let's just do the Roll20 one. So, ah, yeah, the Roll20 wiki is definitely going to be something I need to bring up, isn't it? Roll20 wiki. The Roll20 tutorial is an easy and interactive way to learn the tools. You can access the tutorial anytime in the top bar games drop down. Or just click here. I would like to click here. I've done the drawing tools. Um, tokens. Oh. Okay. Well, come here. Let's do this. Clicking on your token reveals its radial menus. I can't see them when you have that tooltip there. Okay. The colors for the three radial me uh, bubbles can be customized by visiting the My Settings tab discussed later in this tutorial. Radio menu bubbles are good for tracking stats that might change, like ammo or HP. These stats can be linked to an attribute once a character sheet has been assigned to the token. Add numbers to the radio menu bubbles by clicking on the radio and adding a number and hitting enter. You can also apply math to bubbles. The icon menu is good for tracking conceptual ideas or status effects. Wow, there's a lot. Uh, confused. Radioactive, stealthed, slowed, heartbroken, <laughs> poisoned. Okay, that's cool. I actually didn't know that. Optionally, you can hover over the icon in the menu and press the number keys 0 through 9 and add keys to the icon marker. Zero. One, two. You can access the token settings for double clicking this icon. I feel like I messed up. The token settings menu allows you to set player permissions for the token. You can access the token settings by clicking on this icon or double clicking the token. This is the edit token settings. Give myself an aura? Holy shit. Whoa. Okay. It's not a square. I wonder if you can use an aura for, for vision, right? If you're holding a torch, is that how it works? Could you? Um, 30, I don't know what I'm, out of 30, 30 out of 30, uh, 30 out of 30. Show nameplate.
three zero at thirty. Look at that. That's cool. Let's turn off the maelstrom. Why is there a maelstrom? Oh, cool. Dead. The dead token. Oh, well, I gave you so many status effects, and now I don't know how to get rid of them. So they, they hover light blue when they're selected. Aha! Cool. What I want to do... I don't think I have this one set up to have a character sheet in it, though. Do I? Yeah, I would have a character. Okay. Top bar games drop down. Alright, let's go back to this one I was working on. Uh, fifth edition, save changes. Oh, that's cool, it gives you a preview. D and D. Okay. Bum 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 D and D five E. Join the game. That's what Adam did with the old world adventures, just gave whoever had a torch an aura. Yeah, it seems like the way to do it. Ah, uh, good old character. But now she has a character sheet. Um, can this be edited? Oh, cool. So let's just say she's a barbarian, but she's also level five. This is also not editable. So let's just make it half work. Alignment also doesn't say anything, so let's just say lawful good. Just lawful good barbarian. Um, what's a criminal? Sure. Uh, let's see. Global saving throw modifier? I don't know what that means. Why is it so small? Why is this font so small? Like, my eyes are straining to read this. There we go. I just have to zoom in to the actual monitor itself to read it. Uh, sorry, just my eyes are not that good. At one point, at one point I could read this. Not anymore. Jack of all trades. Boom. Where are my stats? Core. Ah, uh, this is this is what I wanted. This is some kind of like random settings tab. If I do fifteen, oh cool, it sets up it changes the modifier. What just happened? Oh I rolled a I rolled a, a stat doing that. Okay. 13. Round, okay, when pressing enter doesn't do anything. Uh, 16, because my constitution's awesome. And I have what? I don't know. An 11 in charisma. So, if I go to settings and hit jack of all trades. Oh, that's how you can add expertise into skills. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. How do I set my hit point maximum? Uh, 
Oh, oh, this is second and third class. I see. I see what that means. I'm actually learning the SRD character sheet as well as this now. To make a copy before you use this tool, choose the sheet you're transferring from. Ah, cool. Do people like to use the um this this SRD sheet, or do they use like the shaped sheet or and all that kind of stuff? Shaped sheet needs a better name. Um, this is fine. This is what Zoom 100 is? Jesus. Reset the default, I guess. Gah, I can't even work with this. I might have lost. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now I can. Now I can handle things. Okay. All I was trying to do is. I want to make a new sheet. I want to drag the carrier, the character. Character probably should be five feet. I want to sync represents character. Aha! And now I can give her things like this. Represents HP, right? Probably need to know HP. So if I was playing this game, I want to know HP. I would like to know armor class. And I would like to know uh, something maybe about my attack. Athletics, Arcana. Is there like a melee? Oh, Inspiration. That's a good one. I go to core and give her she has 50 hit points that's low for a barbarian but so it goes and there there's the 50 if I do oh so let's see the name so players see this oh emits light cool I bring up her character sheet I want to give her inspiration Inspiration is on. Cool. So let's go here. And let's go to uh, Fog of War is enabled. Dynamic lighting is enabled. Um, has sight. Doesn't do anything. Emits light 15 feet. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Let me put boxes in the way. Oh, shit. Sorry. Back to normal size. So the light can go through those boxes. If I put them on the map layer, does it still goes through hmm well now I want to know how to do this now I want to see dynamic lighting be prevented from seeing past these walls these these borders but that's probably super advanced and I'm probably not there that's something I'm interested in.
Okay, so that's the tokens. How do I join the tutorial? How do I get the tutorial from here? 5th edition SRD. Awesome. Do do do. Use window pop-outs for character, advanced keyboard shortcuts, enable chat timestamps. Oh cool, I can change can change so many things. But I can't so to do it this way. So yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what I saw, but I, I don't know how to get back to it. From the Roll20 Top Bar Games drop-down. That must be outside of this. The dynamic lighting is its own layer thingy. Still in the fog of war. Enabled enforced line of sight. Well, that's not the option. I would like to hide that, but I can't. What if I reveal it? Oh, so it's not even revealed. That's the issue. Is it because I'm a GM? I don't know. Roll20 tutorial is an easy and interactive way. This went to tips and tricks, useful macros. Hmm. Make sure to select token action. I don't really know what that means. So many things I don't understand. But the fact that tokens can represent characters is pretty cool. Let me get back to the actual template. Home. The tutorial. I want to learn. I just did uh, tokens. How do I do measurement now?
Why don't I see this? Why don't I see the tutorial in this game? Basic die roller. Oh, crit. Nice. Um, okay, cool. Coding. Oh, okay, it's exploding and has a target number. Okay. Turn order. Oh, okay. That's cool. I didn't know that about adding turns and turn order counting. Wow. Vomit breath. Fire. Smoke. Wow, that's cool. Poof. Magic. Uh, I wish the tutorial had its own thing there. Well, let's just click here. Guess we're going to do everything from their tutorial. Yes, I, I see this part. Oh, so shift snaps to grid. Okay. Okay, so escape cancels that. Cool. Add a polygon to continue. You can change the fill color. I changed. I changed the fill to Collins. <laughs> cool. Learning all the stuff. Ah, uh, this is the next tool. It allows you to add text to the tabletop. In select mode, you can click to highlight, resize, rotate, delete, or move objects. Yes. Okay, that's cool. You can select drawing. Okay, so if I made a... Let me try this. I did. shit.
cool. Uh, I don't know if they're a subscription feature or not. And I need to check something. Pomodoro. Okay, uh, well, I think I'm going to take a quick five minute break because I've done this for 15 minutes and now my brain's tired. So I'm gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll be back with more learning this stuff. I'm literally just gonna keep hitting my head against this wall until I, I figure out how to, how to actually do stuff. Do, do, do. So thank you for, for coming out and just hanging out with me as I learn this stuff. Um, this is just how I'm going to learn. Uh, I, I'm going to have to figure this out. So I'm just going to start small, go through all the tutorials, uh, and see what I can do. So I'll see you guys in about five minutes.